Yeah, but he acted as if this was Transylvania and we were at Dracula's castle. Come on, Scott, this can't be the place. Well, Engler Chemische Fabrik, Engler Chemical Company, this is it. Think fast, Gunther. Uh, uh, just wait a minute. Jamie. Jamie. Come out here and untie me. Look, I don't want to play pirate anymore now. Come on. Untie me. What? I said just a minute. Jamie. Rush, don't come near me. I just want to know what you've been telling people about me. I didn't. Wouldn't what? Tell anybody! Tell them what? That you're the willing to kill her! When is he expected? Yeah, this is Shelly Franklin. Uh, yeah, just tell him I called and please call me back. Thanks. I don't believe it. You don't believe what, dear? <laughs> well, apparently I've been jilted by a small town guy whose idea of a hot night on the town is a Delta Chi Delta Spring formal. <laughs> well, perhaps it's all for the best. Why do you say that? Simply that you won't have to concern yourself with that sort of thing much longer. Why not? Shelley, I have been going over the receipts of the Whitney Theater. We haven't been doing so great lately, have we? Well, some hidden thunder has had a long and profitable run. Past tense. I'm afraid so. So I've decided to retire the play and move on. We'll be closing in two weeks. Well, what happens then? Well, then, of course, you'll be free to leave Monticello. My hands on that kid, I'm gonna. What happened? Oh no. We robbed her. Where's Jamie? Oh, come on, just take it easy, okay? Jamie's just fine. He's the one that tied me into this chair. Why? Why? Because uh, we were playing pirates. He boarded my ship. I, I was supposed to walk the plank. <laughs> hey, no. Jamie! Yeah, I'm sure he's out there <laughs> laughing it up too. Go ahead, laugh it up. But Jamie won't think it's so funny when I tell his mother and she punishes him. Was uh, Raven in yet? No, she's not. Was well, she somewhere I can reach her? I don't want to take Jamie without letting her know. You can reach her? Uh, well, no, it's, it's kind of hard to track her down, you what know. What about uh, Mr. Like Whitney? That. I don't know. Mr. Whitney has not come home yet. He may have dropped off somewhere on his way home from the office. Uh, uh, look, Mr. Um, Wagner, uh, I don't mean to offend you or anything, but I don't like the idea of them leaving you alone with Jamie, even if it's only for an hour or two. You don't like the idea, huh? No. Well, I'm taking care of Jamie just fine. <laughs> yeah, I can see you are. <laughs> now, Rush, you listen to me. Just listen to me. You know that the well has been doing very nicely. You have even said so yourself. Now, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking that I might get a second place. You know, get a mortgage on this one. We can be partners, Rush. We can be modest, so I don't care to place you. I on. already have a job. Rush, I know, but murder? I mean, what kind of job is that? Where's the, where's the possibility for advancement? I promise I won't hurt you if you just stop talking. But you told me to keep talking. You no, told I... me to talk. Rush, look, they're customers. See, I told you business is booming. And, and they know us. I know them. They know. Witnesses! No! Oh, damn it, I can't let no! you. Oh, let's go. Come on, let's go. 
Let's go in the back. No! Hey, Locks couldn't keep a baby out of his joint. Uh, is she okay? I'm okay. Let him in. Take it easy. Yeah, you make one day. wrong move, Russ. I'm gonna carve my knees. Oh, oh, are you all right? Did he hurt all right, you? Everybody relax. What? Uh, it's not what you think. Yeah, well, what's going on here, Russ? What the hell are you gonna do with her? That's what we're here to find out, Russ. What's going on? Well, great, now what? What are we gonna do? It sits miles down the mountain. I don't know. Maybe we can find a phone or something. Skyler, look. A light. Ah! Oh. Visitors! Two weeks, huh? Play's gonna be over in two weeks? Yes. And that means, of course, that your run of the play contract will expire at that time. And you can leave Monticello as soon after that as you wish. Well, certainly that's what you want, isn't it? Oh, right. Yeah, of course. Well, then what is it? I, I, I don't know. I guess I was just getting used to it here. I don't see how that can be. I know that you and Jeremy have broken up, and I also know that you haven't been particularly happy here living with me. Mrs. Saxon, that isn't true. Isn't it? May I remind you that it was only last week you asked me why I thought you were being so self-destructive. What about it? Well, it may be that you're just not happy here, and I know how much you want to return to Hollywood. No! No, I mean, look, you don't understand. I understand what? I didn't like it there either! I hated it in Hollywood, okay? I hated it! Uh. Uh, uh, now look, uh, Mr. You Swift... You don't mind if I wait, do you? Uh, uh, if you want to take Jamie fishing, uh, it's okay. Well, how can that be? Oh, well, that's what you want to do, right? Yeah, but if Sky and Raven aren't here, who said it was okay? Well, uh, Mr. Whitney, uh, I mean, Mrs. Whitney called from the store, see, and I told her about you coming by and uh, wanting to take Jamie fishing, and, and she thought it was a terrific idea. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you tell me that before? Why? Uh, because oh, I was mad at Jamie because he tied me up. That's an interesting point. How could you answer the phone if you were tied up? Well, that was before. Uh, you know, Mrs. Whitney called me, look, if you want to take Jamie fishing, you better get started because it's going to be dark soon. I was planning an overnight trip. Oh, uh, uh, should be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you approve, but I'd also like the approval of Jamie's mother. Well, she And don't does. tell me she already gave it because she couldn't have. I was just... I called you. I didn't tell you I was planning an overnight trip. I was just getting ready to say that Mrs. Whitney approves of overnight trips in general. No, I'm sure she does. But uh, I would like to hear her tell me that herself. How long were you out there? The night air is very chill. Not long. Hello, Carmen. Sky. This is my wife, Raven. How do you do? Hello. Now I begin to understand why your housekeeper was so reluctant to put me through to you when I telephoned earlier. And why is that, Sky? Well, because Ms. Van Dyne was here saying unkind things about me, and that's the reason that you probably left the cafe so abruptly when I mentioned this company. Sky loves playing detective, and Alicia loves playing... Hmm? Nothing. Sky, I merely asked Carmen if she would give me some time to present my case before seeing you. And that's all? Mm-hmm. Really, Sky, you shouldn't always think the worst of me. Excuse me. But I have no idea what Miss Engler must think of you, since it would appear you came here tonight to break in. Look, I don't have to explain anything. Hey, that's fine with me, Russ. You can tell it to the police, man. The Wellington police? Well, Russ, what do you want, the Texas Rangers? All right, all right. I guess I don't have any choice. Oh, no. Look, there are no guns, 
four knives in there. I know, there's just a picture of Tess and, and, and a notebook with stuff on Peter and Jody. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no weapons. Can I have it, please? Yeah, but it's going to help you talk. Right. And Maxine Burton. All Joe five Kelly. victims of the Wellington Killer Rose. Yeah, is that the notebook with me and Jody? Uh, Mrs. Carr and Jeremy are in there, too. What I didn't understand, though, is how you suspected me. You followed us twice to the place where we found the bodies. <laughs> I took a picture. It was dark. Infrared oh, film, I Russ. I enough questions. I want answers, Russ. <sighs> My wallet. <sighs> My identification card. Russell Powell, Mid-Atlantic Insurance Company? Yeah. The reason we came up here tonight was when you and I spoke earlier, you obviously were hiding something. And when you didn't appear at all concerned when I told you your father had been missing for over a month, I became suspicious. Well, I told you the truth, Sky. Anglo often goes away for a month or two months. He tells no one where because it is his fear. The world becomes too much for him. Well, I apologize for my suspicions. I apologize for mine. Aren't you going to apologize for anything, Raven? Don't push it, Alicia. Well, but look, if you've already sold the formula to Ms. Van Dyne here, there's no point in continuing this conversation. Raven, let's go. I have not agreed to this. I have had a letter from my father, dated, as Alicia tells me, a week after he went away. Well, what did it say? That all was well with him. I was not to worry about him. Well, did he say anything about the negotiations or, or, or about the formula? Oh, well, no. This leads me to believe that Engler will be contacting you shortly. Excuse me for butting in, but what are you and Alicia doing here? Well, I just wanted to see the laboratory where Dr. Engler made his marvelous discovery. Not very interesting. It was closed down after he made his breakthrough. As I explained to Skye, my father let his chief assistant Ludwig Crick and the rest of the staff go. There was no further need for them. Well, uh, I'd like to speak with this man, Crick, or anyone in the staff. Not without Angler's approval. I will not help you or talk to you further without Angler's approval. Carmen, forgive me, but you are being very unreasonable. You can't expect us to wait forever. That is not my concern. You will wait for Angler to come back. He always comes back. Well, it would appear that we all made this trip for nothing. You sell insurance? No. Two of the murdered victims were covered by Mid-Atlantic Insurance. Since the Wellington Police Department failed to turn up anything, my company asked me to step in and investigate. I s making pizzas. Oh, yeah, and, and waiting on tables and washing dishes no, and No, it's just tables. that the, the obvious investigations weren't drawing a blank, so I decided that maybe if I... Moved into the college community, uh, worked undercover, I might find something out from the inside. Mm. What'd you mm. find out, Russ? Oh, if I'd only known it at the time. I've seen the murderer face to face. In fact, I even talked to him. That man I saw you talking to the night of the formal. It's very good. See, I overheard Jeremy talking to the McAdam girl about a similarity to her pattern to the other victims. I decided to stake out the dance. I saw this man hanging around. He just didn't seem to fit in. So I followed him, but he lost me going across campus. Then, sometime later, I saw him go into the Delta Chi house. Right, 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 right. That's what Tess was looking for, Jody. No, I think it was his second visit. I think he was just in there to clean up any evidence he might have left behind. Hmm. Well, I went in after him, but he, while I was downstairs, he must have slipped out. Well, you almost saw me when you came in right after that. Yes, you're right. And so he, he, he must have already taken Tess away. Yeah. See, the thing, my problem was I, I didn't get a good look at him. So as soon as you all went upstairs, I ran out after him. And luckily, I caught him just outside the library. And I asked him the time. And that's when I showed up. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? 
Oh, yeah. Okay, I think now's the time for you to meet the police. Oh, not the Wellington police. No, 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 the Monticello police. I want you to meet Derek Mallory. I thought you liked me. Oh, Shelley, I've become very fond of you. Surely you must know that. You said you wanted to help me. Well, I certainly don't want to run you out, but I don't seem to be doing you any good. Mrs. Saxon, you've done me a lot of good. Don't you see? That's why I helped you with the Millie thing. You see? Mrs. Saxon, I tell you what, I've got a great idea. Let me do another play. See, that way you don't even have to pay me as much. Well, you see, on the advice of my manager, I'm going to book a series of road companies into the theater. Audiences seem to like that sort of thing for the summer, and I... Oh, now, see here. I'm really very sorry that you feel this way, but I thought this news would make you happy. You're free. I'm free. I'm free. All right. Uh, look, I, I don't see any other way out of this. Uh, out of what? Well, uh... See, Jamie's out there in the kitchen, and uh, the Whitneys aren't here. So you said. Yeah, well, what I mean is uh, the Whitneys are not going to be back here tonight, either. Where are they? Switzerland. What? Now, it's not what you think, Mr. Swift. Get no. Jamie out here. I want to see Jamie right away. All right. All right. All right. How could you? See, thought I was lying, huh? Hey, champ, come here. Oh. There he is. How you doing? Fine. All right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, Switzerland, huh? So they went to see Carmen Engler. Yeah. Left Jamie here alone. He was not alone. Mm -hmm. Jamie, you go get your coat and stuff. We're getting out of here. No. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but I can't allow that now. Oh, you better be careful what you're saying. Yeah, tell me about it. <clears throat> you can't refuse to let me have my own son. Well, I probably can't, but there's no way that I can avoid it. Now, look, uh, the Whitney's said that I was to keep an eye on Jamie, and that's exactly what I intend to do. Mrs. Whitney would never forgive me if I handed him over to you now because you'd never bring him back. Damn right I wouldn't. Jamie? Right here, <clears throat> well, um, I don't want the kid to see his old man get bounced off a couple of walls. But in order for me to keep my promise to the witness, if I have to do it, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't believe this. Well, you believe it. Well, don't do anything stupid, Mr. Swift. You see, um, cooking. House cleaning's not really my main job around here, Capiche. What other Whitney's do back? Uh, I don't know. A couple days, maybe. You uh, can take Jamie fishing then. Uh -huh. May I kiss my son goodbye? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, Jamie. Hey. See you later, okay? Be all right? Bye, Dad. See ya. I'll be okay. All right, Chad. Uh, Mr. Swift, uh, listen, uh, thanks. I appreciate it. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Guess I've gone and done it now, huh? Say, so your husband's a member of that Monticello Club, right? I saw something about that on TV. Yes, yes, what? Oh, I just figured he'd be. He's a, he's a type. Uh, Chief Mallory, please. Type? Yeah, he, he's out of town, isn't he? I saw that on TV. He's in New York or something. Uh, Washington, actually. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just, uh, I like to keep up on things. I am very sorry if I frightened you, but I, I don't know. I was just desperate to try to keep my cover up here. And... 
Now it's gonna make my investigation that much harder. Oh, Russ, I didn't want to believe you were a killer. I, I mean, you gotta admit the evidence was piling up pretty fast there. Yeah. But for an insurance investigator, I'm a pretty good cook, huh? You're not gonna be cooking for me anymore, are you? No, I'm sorry. But that doesn't mean we couldn't see each other sometime. Yeah, I would like that. Mm. Boy, you are a great kisser. <laughs> so are you. Take care. Hey, Russ. Thank you. Oh, and he could cook, too. You'll excuse me. I think I'll go to my room and try to figure out something to do with the rest of my life. Oh, Shelley, wait a minute, please. I do think that we ought to... Logan! Oh, Geraldine, I've had enough. I've done everything I could to be fair to Raven and your nephew, but no more. I want my son, and I'm going to get him back. <laughs> 